Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti. I am MrPhotographer.com. Recently, Adobe updated Lightroom Desktop to version 4.3. In this video, we're going to talk about everything that's new and exciting in this, the latest version of Lightroom Desktop. But before I do that, let's talk about all these different Lightroom apps. Almost all of my videos on my channel are on Lightroom Classic. Adobe updated that as well to version 10.3. I did a video on that yesterday. I'll have a link to that video in the description below this video. Now what you're viewing is technically called Lightroom Desktop. Um, many of us call this Lightroom Mobile, but that is incorrect because there is another version called Lightroom Mobile that looks almost identical to Lightroom Desktop and has just about all the same features as Lightroom Desktop. It's just that Lightroom Desktop, the what you're viewing is meant to be used on a desktop or laptop computer and Lightroom Mobile is meant to be used on a mobile device like a tablet or a smartphone. Now, I'm going to be demoing new features in Lightroom Desktop. A couple of these features are also applicable to Lightroom Mobile and we'll talk about that as we go along. And we're gonna talk about four different things. I'm gonna briefly mention three and I'm gonna demo one. Uh, one of those new features I'm just gonna mention is they added what they're calling professional presets and this is available both in the desktop version of Lightroom and in the mobile version of Lightroom. Now to get to them you go to the edit panel and they moved presets. It used to be down here at the bottom there was a big button right here and it, you click on that and the preset browser would open up. It's now up here it's the smaller button at the top and when you do that the same preset browser opens and these new quote professional presets are up here at the top. You can see there's portraits and all this stuff, style cinematic, all these kind of wacky presets all at the top. So that's new in both the mobile version of Lightroom and the desktop version of Lightroom. Now to close the preset browser, you can click on that little X or just click on that preset button again and you'll close down the preset browser. Now the next thing is also available in the mobile version and in the desktop version, that is, you could invite people via email to help you edit or maybe look at your edit of an image. Now to do that, you have to have the image in an album. To get to your albums, you go over here on the left-hand panel and open up that. Then down here, you can see I have this image in an album. I called it Working Album. To get to this feature, just right-click right on that and then go down to Share an Invite. And when you do that, this dialog box opens up and you have the choice of just getting a shareable link. And then you could just email that link to anyone and they'll be able to access the album. If you don't want a shareable link, you could just invite people individually by adding their email address here. Then they'll get an email inviting them to either one, if this is clicked, view what's in this album. Or if, it, if you choose this choice, they'll be able to view and add to the album. Or if you choose this choice, they'll be able to view, add to the album, and edit what is in the album. You also could go through these tabs across the top. You could customize it. You could give it a different title than Working Album that I have. You could put your name as the author. Then the theme that they're going to view it on, is it going to be a photo grid or is it going to be a column or one up? Or do you want and, and or do you want the appearance dark or light? You could do that there. And then there's additional settings here. And here you could allow them to download JPEGs of the images that are in the album. You could show your metadata, show your location, allow comments and likes, all that right here. Allow access requests where people who click get the shareable link um, could enable this feature. So all that is new in both the desktop version and the mobile version of Lightroom. Now the next two things are only in the desktop version. One is, and I'm surprised this wasn't in here so, uh, sooner, you could do a custom crop ratio. To do that, of course, go to the crop tool. You can see I did a significant tight crop on this. But if you go down to this drop down where it says aspect ratio, at the very bottom they added this, enter custom. And when you do that, this little box pops up and you could put a custom aspect ratio. And when you click OK with that custom ratio, it'll save it in the drop down so it'll be there forever. So you could do that now with just the desktop version of Lightroom. Now, when I say just the desktop version, all right, I'm talking about between that and the mobile version, like custom crop ratio that was always available in Lightroom Classic, at least for as long as I remember. So 
Um, we're not talking about Lightroom Classic at all. So let's just get that out of our mind. We're just going to differentiate between the desktop version of Lightroom and the mobile version of Lightroom. And this last thing I'm going to show you is probably the newest, most significant thing uh, in here. They added super resolution uh, to just the desktop version. It's also in Lightroom Classic, but it's just in the desktop version. It's not in the mobile version. And super resolution is embedded with Enhance. Enhance is something that was added to uh, Lightroom, I want to say maybe a year ago. And it is meant to be used, Enhance that is, it is meant to be used with um, either X-Trans or Bayer sensors. Super resolution could work on anything. So whereas Enhance needs a raw file, that was shot on a camera that has an X-Trans sensor or a Bayer, Bayer sensor. Uh, super resolution will work on any file type, including a RAW file, JPEG, uh, you know, a TIFF file, whatever. It'll work on anything, but you do have to access it through Enhance. To get to Enhance, go up to Photo, and then down towards the bottom, you'll see Enhance, or you could just right-click right on the image and then go down to the very bottom, Enhance. And when you do that, the Enhance dialog box pops up and I mentioned that inside this dialog box is super resolution. You can see it right here and I'm going to turn it off for a moment. Let's just talk about Enhance for a second uh, for those of you that maybe aren't familiar with it. The reason why you may want to use Enhance is that images taken with those two types of sensors, this is very common with the Fuji X-Trans sensor, a little more than the Bayer sensor. A lot of times people complain that Lightroom doesn't edit those images quite right and they're not quite as crisp and clear so Adobe's answer to that is enhance where you could come in and really at the pixel level uh, modify the image so that it looks sharper and cleaner overall now with enhance on now this again enhance has been in Lightroom for over a year so what I'm showing you now isn't new let me just zoom out and let me zoom in on a part of the bird, maybe right here, that's supposed to be in perfect focus, like right here. All right, right now it's the enhanced version. So this is supposedly enhanced. If I click with the left mouse button and hold, there's the unenhanced version. Now you can probably see that when it's not enhanced, there's like these swirly lines up here. And you can see how those are eliminated with enhanced. So that's what enhanced does. It really goes down to that really tiny pixel level and hopefully gets rid of artifacts and things like that. Now what super resolution will do is after you enhance it, um, if, you, if it's a raw file, or again, you could use super resolution. I want to stress this. You could use it on JPEGs. You could use it on anything. Enhance, or yeah, enhance has to be used on a raw file that was shot with either a Bayer sensor or an X-Trans sensor. Now with that said, super resolution will double the length and double the width. Now it says here it doubles the image resolution, but when you're doubling the length and doubling the width, you're quadrupling the resolution. And this is what they say on their website. This is just wrong. Okay, so that's just wrong. You're actually quadrupling the resolution because when you double the length and double the width, you're creating four times as many pixels. So you're quadrupling the resolution. So when you do that now, when you click here, what you'll see is it kind of zooms in, all right? So then you could see, in this case, enhance and super resolution working together. If I left click, you could see all those kind of swirlies in there, and then it supposedly clears that up. It's also telling you it's going to take around 11 seconds to do this. So let's click Enhance, all right? And you can see in the top left-hand side, it's creating or generating an enhanced DNG. So it doesn't touch the original RAW file. If you are using super resolution on a JPEG or a TIFF or a PSD file or something like that, it's not going to touch that original file. It's going to create a new uh, DNG file and it's going to nest it. So you can see down here in the film strip, we have a nested image. If I click on two, you can see we have them both here. Now, if I go over here and I click on this little eye, you can see that, let's go to the original image first, all right? You can see that this was 3,710 by 2,473 pixels, and it was a Fuji RAW file. Now, if I go on the left-hand side, or the image on the left, this is the DNG. It is now 7,419 by 4,946. Um, so it's double the length, double the width, quadruple the resolution. And the reason why, of course, you want to do this, I mentioned when I did the Lightroom Classic um, video, um, 
that if you do a significant crop like I did on this image and you want to get a very large print of it, if you crop away all those pixels, the print won't look good. So you want to uh, get a higher resolution image and this is what this allows you to do. Now, of course, there's um, aftermarket or third party applications or other applications that do this, that are dedicated to do this. I think it's on one resize, it's been out for a long time that does this. More recently, Gigapixel AI will do this. Now, probably the results, just the raw results from Gigapixel AI and super resolution from Adobe are going to be pretty similar. Where Gigapixel AI probably wins, though, is you have more um, options. Customize the, the size you want to enlarge it to. Super resolution, it's just twice the width and twice the length, and you don't have any options. With Gigapixel, you could go 2x, 4x, 6x. You could do a custom resize, make it a very specific size. You could do that with Gigapixel. So Gigapixel definitely has a lot more options, and it's more versatile. Um, and overall, um, it probably when you're done you know, reducing noise and sharpening it, it, it probably is better in many instances on many images than maybe super resolution is. But with that said, super resolution is still a welcome addition to all the versions of Lightroom. Uh, hopefully it gets to Lightroom mobile someday. So now it's on um, Adobe Camera Raw, which it has been for a couple months. It's on uh, Lightroom Classic since yesterday and Lightroom Desktop since yesterday. So hopefully um, you utilize super resolution you find it useful so that you could get some really nice big prints of your images that you found that you had to do a really tight crop on like that all right so that's it that's what's new in lightroom desktop version 4.3 thank you everyone who watches my videos i really do appreciate it i'll talk to you guys soon